Hey everybody, it's Christian Buckley doing another MVP Buzz Chat. I'm talking today with Alicia. Hello. Hey, it's great to be here, Christian. Well, for folks that don't know you as a brand new MVP out in the system, um, who are you, where are you, and what do you do? Yeah, I'm, my name is Alicia Keener. I live in, live in Greenville, South Carolina, and I've been in the Microsoft D365 FNSC space for since 2009. So at the time, it was Microsoft AX 2009. And uh, so I primarily deal with life science companies. So right now my, I specialize in med devices and pharmaceuticals. Yeah, you know, that is a space that I was just talking with somebody yesterday about what's happened over on, you know, with, with those acquisitions that Microsoft made and some new products that are over on the dynamic side, like how much change has happened in that space over the last 10, 15 years? And I, I think it was, it was at, while it was pre COVID. So there was at, at one of the partner conferences in like 2017 or 2018 going over and talking with the dynamics. It, it, it's like Microsoft woke up and said, you know, we need to be investing more in these spaces and things just kind of shifted and changed. And now I see more and more partners that focus almost entirely on the dynamic space or entirely on the dynamic space. I'm over on the collaboration side and the M365 side. And so coming across vendors that don't do anything M365 and are all in dynamics, it's strange to me, but they're thriving and growing. They are, it's a growing market in a big way and it's highly regulated by the FDA. So there's lots of compliances, GXP validations and stuff that go with it. So in, unless you have your systems in place as a manufacturer specifically of pharmaceutical or medical devices, you really can't play in the game. So right. it's super, super important to have a strong ERP system with traceability and those kinds of things. And that's really where Microsoft's winning in this space is because of the Microsoft stack. Yeah. So now all of a sudden you have software as a service, so it's highly secure in the cloud and you have your power apps your power BI, you have all the different pieces that go into that. Now AI is coming into the picture. So it's totally changing the landscape for life science companies. You know, it, when I was working with a number of companies in the manufacturing manufacturing technology space, and so I have some familiarity with the space and working in, you know, PLM or product lifecycle management um, technologies, which is kind of how I found my way into collaboration into then like SharePoint and the Microsoft ecosystem, that side of things. Um, but what's interesting, I started noticing this about 10 years ago is that companies that worked in like with the in the IBM ecosystem and were non Microsoft technologies that were were you know I remember when I joined Microsoft in 2006 talking with contacts in that space that they were still strong anti Microsoft you know, how many of those companies have made the move over the shift over and it's exactly like I said it was Microsoft was a leader in the cloud and stabilizing enterprise quality solutions and then giving that flexibility like with the business application space to go out and let users and and power users and engineers with low code i, I don't believe buy into no code low code solutions uh but be able to um in a stable way go and automate and add on to these these systems it, it's been a huge dramatic shift of those companies over into the space, which is again, yay for us. Right, I mean, absolutely. Well, one of the things is most companies, when you go in now, they assume ERP is gonna do what they need. They really just go in there because there's so many, so many good offerings in the marketplace now. So it's not anymore of like, hey, I'm buying this great ERP system because they already know it's great. But they're saying, what can I use with it inside of my organization? Can I use Teams, right? Can I approve a purchase order through Teams? Can I do some kind of interaction with Outlook? Can I do interactions with my KPIs and my dashboards and those kinds of things? So it's really about not just inputting data into the ERP anymore, is they're harvesting the data. So when we go into a sales pursuit, it's really about the Microsoft stack. It's not just about finance and supply chain anymore. 
So it's really an interesting, it's really a game changer. It's really Microsoft's done a great job becoming that one Microsoft. Yeah, and it's, uh, I, I guess, the, the risk there too, for folks that maybe have never been in that position, going out and looking at the, all the various third-party apps. And you know, if you've got an RFP out there for a solution and you're dealing with all these companies that have been around less than a decade mm -hmm. that, you know, whether they can scale, whether they integrate, whether they have the supporting services, whether there's the ecosystem, all those things out there all play into it. It helps though that Microsoft in so many categories now is just the leader in the space. And, and so that helps uh, uh, move into some of these areas. And again, working in the manufacturing technology space, um, having worked at the beginning of my career in the, the legal space and being familiar with technology in these different areas, my daughter is in healthcare. I've got a son that is both that do um, uh, kind of data science, one that's over in uh, one in healthcare, the other one in atmospheric sciences, so weather related, you know, data and things that are out there. Again, they all have tools and systems that are unique to the industry and have those integrations. And that's where you rely on the ecosystem. And one of Microsoft's, long been one of Microsoft's strongest arguments for businesses is that they're all about that integration, you know, cross-platform integration, consistent, you know, behavior, user experience, um, whether on the IT side or the end user side across all these different tools Again, I'm, I'm just, I sound like an advertisement for Microsoft for the, the, the business tools, but. Oh, it's, it's super powerful and it has a, such a huge impact. And one of the things that we see is a lot of companies will pick Microsoft before they ever come to us. So I'm a director at RSM in the life science delivery team. And when they come to us, they're saying, hey, we already know we want Microsoft. Are you the right partner for us? Right. So really it's not, it used to, it wasn't like that. It used to, there was like this big delegation about like, am I going to go with Oracle or SAP, you know, these kinds of things. But one of the things that really sets a partner apart from other partners is you want to go to a partner that specializes in what you do. You do not want to pick a generic partner to implement your Microsoft, do your Microsoft implementation. Right. Because statistically, even agnostic of who the platform is, whether it's Microsoft or Oracle, or whoever, 50% of implementations are deemed unsuccessful. 50%. You know what a risk that is to your business? Yeah. So whenever you're going out looking for a company or to put to be your partner, you want to make sure you're getting someone in your industry. That's the biggest advice I would give to anybody that's looking for software. Microsoft made that push. Again, I, I went, so, uh, you know, uh, for 10 years in a row, attended the Microsoft, it used to be the Worldwide Partner Conference, got rebranded as Inspire. This year, they're combining it with Ignite. We'll see how that goes in Chicago in, in November. Um, but uh, I think there's an argument for having the standalone business conference. But Microsoft has been making that pitch saying, you know, go and specialize. Microsoft made their own shift where all of their field engineers, there used to be PFEs. I don't know what they call them now. They the role titles keep changing, but they took all those folks that were out in the field and put them in industries with industry focused and dedicated for exactly the same reason. There are, again, you've got the standardized platforms, but you have those, the deep integrations and subject matter expertise into those industries so that's how Microsoft is selling now. Like I've got a good friend down in Texas who was a PFE across collaboration and yet now is focused on expanded collaboration and dynamics and you know business applications of power platform, all those for the healthcare sector. And that's that's all that he does is deep dives into that. And uh, again, it allows him to have much deeper questions with and better answer questions. Um, into those the industry specific. And so Microsoft has been recommending that for a long time, folks. Yeah, and for good reason. <laughs> right. Well, tell me too. So you, as a brand new MVP, I always like hearing about the your origin story. Like did sure. how long did did was this something that you've known about the MVP mm -hmm. program for years and new MVPs or did someone approach you? Like what's the story there? You know, it's funny. A few years ago, so I have twin girls. They turned 18 in April. So now I'm officially a mother of adult kids. Um, and a few years ago, you know, I was telling them about Microsoft MVP and stuff. They're like, you know, mom, your name should be there. 
And I was like, yeah, you know, who knows, you know, kind of thing. But that really struck me because I'm like, you know, if I do it, then other people, including my girls, are going to say, hey, if mom can do it, I can do it too. Yep. And so March, I think it was March the 6th of 2023, I was sitting at my computer and I was on LinkedIn and I had like 900 connections, not a lot of people, but I was still, I was sitting there thinking like, I had these 900 people, but I'm giving them nothing. And I've been in this space for a long time and I'm like, yeah, why, why are you so I, selfish, Alicia? Come exactly. on. Exactly. <laughs> and I was sitting here thinking, cause I was never formally trained on Microsoft. It was me and Google. Yeah. I mean, I'm telling you, it was just this, I learned the hard way, but that's also why I know it so well is because I learned it the hard way. But I'm like, every time I would like search for something and I'd find someone else's blog, I'd be like, oh man, this is like such a blessing. Like I found the answer finally. And so I was sitting there and I'm like, why can't I do that for other people? Yeah. And I thought, you know what, if I help just one person, if I make one person's day better, it's worth it. Yeah. So I started this tip of the day. So I started posting a tip of the day about Microsoft Dynamics C365 at Finance and Supply Chain. Well, here we are almost a little over a year later. I have almost 7,000 connections on LinkedIn now. Wow. I mean, it's, I just look at that and I'm like, I went out to, to help one. And what I learned is when you help one, you help many. Right. And for me, so I didn't start the tip of the day to become Microsoft MVP, but it was one of those things that started getting traction. And I was like, hmm, maybe this will turn into something. And then November of last year, another MVP reached out to me and said, hey, would you like for me to nominate you? And I was like, yeah, this would be fantastic. And so I got nominated. Um, we, he told me to wait until I had blogged for 10 months um, to actually get nominated. So he nominated me in January of 2024. And I got accepted um i got the mvp title on may 1st of 2024 so and i also started doing youtube videos um about it was in october of last year and i think it's been they've been viewed over twenty seven thousand times wow i mean yeah. who would have guessed right and my the demographic for my blogs have been viewed in like 150 countries mm -hmm. so my demographic is big and i mean again I didn't have any of that in sight, right? <laughs> I just sat down and said, if I can help one person, make one person's day better. Right. And that's what it turns into. And I, I just feel like there's so much power in that because it shows that you matter. Christian matters. Alicia matters. The folks listening to this podcast matter. What you do impacts those around you. So if you can give that one person a better day or make them look like a hero on their project, mm -hmm. success. You know, it, there's something about that too. I've had discussions with people that are like my my undergrad, my training is is, is a marketer, but I've worked, you know, uh, very little of my experience in W two roles is has been as a marketer. I've done a lot in the years since, but um, talking with marketers that are like you know want to you want to spend your time on high return activities like if you're only getting 50 views three months later, like stop on that path, you know, look at those, what are the topics that are going to earn you those? And I, I said, I said, that's great. If your goal is to build up the views, if you're being measured on that, my answer has always been like, no, I'm going, there's a question here. And, and a year later, there might be 30 people that watch that video, but you know, a handful of those people like really needed that information. It was a, an unanswered question out there, or a slight variation of what was out there. I'm going to go and build that. And so I've had, I don't know, what's your position on that? Like, do you, because uh, I always look at it this way. Like I was in a rock band long time ago, 30 years ago. Um, and if we showed up to a gig uh, and there were two people there, we'd play the same gig and enjoy ourselves as if it was, you know, 250 people there in the room. Um, and so we're, we're going to play regardless. And, and I look at it the, kind of the same way for creating the content. Like I need to get this out there. There's people that need the answer to this. I'm not doing it for the numbers. Right. Yeah, absolutely. No, I mean, for me, I, I do it because it, when it brings, brings me pleasure, actually, you know, I'm putting something out to the universe to say, if somebody else is needing this, they're going to find it. If they don't need it, they're not going to find it. Right. So if that's one person or a thousand people, 
it, it, it might, it might, I feel like I've done my job once I put it out there. And if it gets consumed, because it may not get consumed today, it may be something someone needs five months from now. So, and, and lots of times I don't even look at the numbers. I just happened to look at the numbers yesterday because I was posting something and I was a little curious. I'm like, oh, I wonder how many page views I've had, you know, and, and those kinds of things. But it, it really doesn't, I don't, I don't look at it very often um, because for me, that's not where I get my satisfaction. I'm not looking to be, I, I mean, obviously I want people to know my name, but I don't really care if they know my name either. I'm not doing it for the publicity of it or what I'm getting from it. For me, whenever you give, you just organically give back. Yeah. It's, to me, that's the way it goes. I really have no agenda. In fact, I don't even put pressure on myself to post. If I have an idea and it comes to me, I'm going to post. If I don't, then I don't. I really don't. Because for me, if I, I feel as if, though, if I were to put myself on a schedule saying, oh, you have to post, you know, three days this week or five days this week, I feel like it would take away the joy from it. And that's really, I don't want that. I'm doing yeah. it because it actually it brings me joy. Well, it's funny you should, this is a different conversation for this, but uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm two months away from three years of daily posts. Wow. And so <laughs> to, to the point there, cause I've had, cause I completely agree with you. If you're not enjoying this, in fact, I, I had this advice I, I, I co-run a group where we mentor people that want to become MVPs with a fellow MVP and RD. And uh, and we say this all the time. Uh, in fact, I just said this in a previous recording this week uh, with another MVP is that if you don't enjoy those things, those the contributions that you go into, then you're not going to be consistent. You, you, you know, the why, why are you doing that? So it needs to be a blend of, if you're thinking about becoming an MVP, you need to find a way to contribute things that count towards the program, if that's one of your goals, um, but do the things that you enjoy. If you don't like doing it, if you're having to force yourself to go and do these things to be more community minded, then it's not, not the right path for you. I think you have your why matters, why right. you do something. And if you're doing it for the right why, mm -hmm. then it just kind of organically happens. And it doesn't mean you just still don't put forth effort. You still don't do those things but the motivation behind it, because I truly feel like if I did it out of obligation, my audience would somehow know. I yeah. think it would come through in my voice inflections or my presentation or my, you know, even like being on here, I wanted to come here today. Yeah. Because for no, me- No, no, I force people. Come on, Alicia, you, you can tell the truth. I force <laughs> people feet over fire to join in, yes. <laughs> because it's about passion, right? It's about right. whenever you do what you love, it just comes out of you. And it's one of the things I, I don't know if you know who Erwin McManus is. I don't know if you've ever heard of him. He's a business coach uh, to like the top one percenters. And I listen to him a lot. And one of the things he said, he's like, you know, when you've hit your ceiling, whenever you feel like you're the smartest person in the room and you have nothing left to learn. I never feel I'm the smartest in the room. And I always feel like I have stuff to learn. So I guess I'm just... Exactly. Yeah, going. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> same. I feel the same way. Yeah. But see, that's a growth mindset. People that are that feel like they're always disgruntled and they're never really happy and they're, you know, they're, everyone else is, in, you know, not smart, but them, those kinds of things. Those people have a fixed mindset and they've hit their ceiling. In order to get out of it, to get to be, get beyond your ceiling, you have to get curious. Yeah. I think the reason I'm successful today is because I'm extremely curious. Like, I don't care if people think I'm smart. If I you say something and I don't know what it is, I'm going to say, hey, Christian, what is that? Right. Because I'm, your, I'm genuinely curious about what you're talking about, and I want to learn more about it. So to me, that is where the energy comes from. That's where a lot of my posts come from. And it just, it, I think it inspires people mm -hmm. because nobody knows it all. Nobody. And if they think they do, they're kidding themselves because it's just too much. <laughs> well, that's is I've, I've got, you know, some relatives that, that think and I, from time to time, you know, when you have teenagers, they think they know uh, all the answers too. But, um, <laughs> and I was just thinking to myself, like I could sit in a room with my kids and all four of my kids are adults now, but you know, and they, they all are very confident that they know more than dad. I'm just like, no, what you're experiencing here is that I'm just having a growth mindset. Like, you know, you, I don't know what you guys are doing, but that's what dad's doing. No, but, uh, you know, it's, um, 
it makes me think too of just the uh, I'm an old uh, if you know Seth Godin in the in the marketing world um, where he wrote a couple books that were very much focused on authenticity. So going back to what you said, like you can if you force it, we've all seen this where you're reading an article and you're like, well, the, clearly this is nowadays you know mostly AI generated some marketing person they don't actually understand have depth in that topic um there's it's not authentic it just feels artificial shallow it's nice ad copy it's not yeah i'm not getting any value out of this thing and, and, and honestly i've written some articles like that where i'm not passionate it's it's why i like i made the the decision uh years ago that even though it's a smaller subset of this broader microsoft ecosystem my passion lies in the collaboration technology. Now, luckily in the Microsoft space, I mean, there, there's a dozen pieces that fit within that. It is growing, it is it expanding. And with the pandemic, especially organizations have started to realize how core, you know, the, the technology is to everything else that they're doing. Um, I like to say we, we enable people like you to go focus on ERP because we <laughs> provide the intranet, the, the, the team working tools, teams, SharePoint, OneDrive, all these different pieces and support those models. And, uh, you know, there's, depending on industry, there's just so many great conversations to, to have out there. But anyway, sorry, um, I get, I soapbox on that topic, but. You're but, passionate but, about it. <laughs> but having, right, but having authenticity, I mean, people can tell. And that's where yeah. it goes back to what you said. It's like, it doesn't matter if I'm writing an article for 30 people or, 3,000 people read that in a month. Um, it's about, hey, answering a question that somebody had. Exactly. And, yeah. Exactly. Well, I love that. That's one of the reasons why I love the AMA format. They're like, what are your questions? And let's answer the specifics of your question. Instead of just providing generic, broadly applicable solutions, tell me specifically what your scenario is and let's walk through it, what this looks like. Right. So, well, Alicia, I really appreciate that uh, one. Nice to meet you. And uh, I, I'm sure with the events now kind of getting back online, uh, you know, maybe we'll run across each other at a future event. Are you doing any events this year? So I'm going to be speaking at the Summit Roadshow. So the summit, okay. the big summit is in Texas, I believe, um, in the fall. But they're doing this roadshow thing. Um, Microsoft is, I think this may be the first year they've done it, but I'll be speaking at the Atlanta Summit Roadshow okay. September 26th. They've so. done different flavors of that. I mean, pre-COVID, they were doing the, what was it, the uh, the uh, uh, Ignite, the regional Ignite events and that kind of stuff. So I think when they were testing that out in 2018, 2019, when it kind of started, and they were like, hey, this is this is a good format. And so now it's moved into other divisions to go and do that. Um, rather than try and get everybody to Chicago, everybody to this, you know, to the Vegas, uh, in Vegas. Um, you know, but uh, <laughs> sorry. It's not my school either. <laughs> I know people that like Vegas and I've got good friends in Henderson just south of there. It's like, but man, it, I get it why events are there. You need the huge space, but man, I hate Vegas. <laughs> but anyway. Well, Alicia, it's really great to know you. Get to know you. For folks that want to reach out to you, connect with you, where are you most active on social? Where can people find you? Oh my goodness, yeah. So I'm active on LinkedIn, and I also have my own website. And my website is aliciakeener.com. Okay. Well, I, of course, we'll have the links out on the the podcast, out on the blog, um, out on YouTube with the videos. You can find it in all those lo locations. And as I always say, reach out to Alicia, connect with her. If there's anything of interest there, because MVPs are the most they're the easiest to connect with people. We're super connectors. We're always happy to hear from folks. So don't be shy. Reach out. Tell her where you saw her, heard her voice, and uh, and get connected. Great. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure being here. Wow. Wow.